I wish my computer would stop to you guys see the little line that go across my face. <laughs> all right, all right, recordings in session. Hi, we are here um, for our 587 third discussion, which is um, writing IEP um, goals and benchmarks. And um, I'm Caroline. We'll sway. Diana. Sergio. Um, and we are going to start by defining who our student is that we are going to um, make these IEP goals and benchmarks for. Uh, so I think we should probably start with what grade our student is in. Um, do you guys, um, do you guys want to stick to elementary just because I know like the majority of the vote is in elementary? Elementary? Yeah. Okay. So considering that kindergartners, it's not in a, it's not mandatory in the state of Illinois. Um, I think it's hard to write personally, even though that's probably what I'm be doing next year. Um, work on IEP goals for a student that's just potentially starting school. So I would suggest someone between first and third grade. Um, if anybody has a specific grade among those, not that there's a lot of choices. Um, I think that's our next step. Okay, third grade sounds good to me. Or is it second grade a benchmark year these days? For next year. Uh, as of right now, third yeah. grade is a benchmark. All right, so I'm good with second or third. I have a little bit more experience with third grade, so I'd, I'd vote for third grade. Let's go with third. Okay, third grader. I'm like, is this how people feel when we're doing the, the secondary transitional plans? Okay. Um, I'm, I personally don't think it's important to know whether they have a gender attached to them. Does anybody else feel like they need a gender? I didn't even consider. Uh, okay, good. So just a third grader. Yeah. Um, um, I think the next, I would say the next big piece is what the disability is. Should we stick to like uh, maybe like a student within like the spectrum or what do you guys? So a specific learning disability? Yeah, okay. that's one. Up until third grade, if I am correct, they can be DD, but then once they go fourth grade, they have to switch. Mm -hmm. um, and do we want to do the specific learning disability in either reading or math or both? I think we could probably do like one math and one reading. Okay. Okay. So do we want to? go further into what the, I think we should go further into what that specific learning disability is. Mm -hmm. So for reading, we can say something like dyslexia. Also that NOAA text y'all is amazing. What is it? The NOAA text that we learned at Donna to use like a certain, um, yeah, I use it on my student. And, oh my God. I haven't used it yet. I should try because I have a third grader with dyslexia and I have more than one. Um, and it's been, I, we've been trying to find different solutions, you know, different try interventions or ways to, to help them read before they go off to fourth grade with not a little time left. And I totally forgot about that. No attacks. So can you guys okay. hear me? Yep. Squirrel. Um, my computer, my computer glitched out, and I can't see you. So I'm trying. To, I might end up getting dropping out, and coming back in. As I say. Okay. <laughs> it happens to me sometimes, and I just turn my video off and turn it back on. But right now, we have defined our specific learning disability and our for reading. Um, we're going to use dyslexia. Is that okay, Sergio? 
Can you hear us? Yes, I'm trying to fix it. I'm That's fixing okay. it as you go. You're good with dyslexia for the reading? Okay, we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> okay, so um, math, do we want to go with something different or do something like dysgraphia? Uh, the for math, I believe it's called dyscalculia. Oh, dyscalculia. Yeah. Or do, or do we want to define? Uh, do there's some? I mean, it could be. Let me look. I, I think with just um, dyslexia, we'd be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah. Um. Because usually, I don't find people that have both of those. I find one or the other. Really. I haven't found one that had both yet in my many students that I've come across. They, I've seen the ones that usually have trouble reading are really uh, pretty good at math. Oh, I have a couple that it's both. Ah. Uh, it's really interesting because this calculus is really I, hard to find skill. Like I don't, I still haven't been able to navigate that well to help. Um. Okay. So dyslexia for both. When we're going to do reading and math, is there a specific um, part of reading or literacy? So, or math? Well, I guess it's the sub that, subject matter. I believe in order to the best way, I've been told that the best way to make a, a goal is to look at next year's um, standards and you kind of pick out what is most important and that's the one that you make the goal based on so he's currently in third grade going into fourth is that right they yes we didn't oh, they, right but yeah so then i say we should look at the common course standards for math and english in fourth grade to figure out what the goal should be but uh before we can can i give a little pushback about that yes sure go ahead yeah only like I see the logic behind like you know kind of using next year's like like benchmark like grade that they're in, but remember like we also got to go at the grade level. How can we challenge a third grade student that at a fourth grade grader standards that they're not even achieving the third one? So so I think kind of touching like on both points, I think it really depends as to when the IEP is being written. So right uh -huh. now. If, if it's like for our, we're writing an IEP student for right now, it would make sense to look at next year's uh, benchmarks because the bulk of this IEP will be performed next year. So we definitely want to set up the student for success for the, that current year, they'll be, the IEP is being implemented. However, if it's at the start of the school year, we may want to focus more on those third grade standards because the, the bulk of the IEP uh, will be during that the student's third grade um, year. So having those things in mind, I think, because when, um, from my experience, seeing some of the IEPs we received at the early of the school year, they were, they were second graders when they got these IEPs. And we were like, they can do this. Um, some of these skills, like they've mastered already. Um, whereas some of them were like, they're not there yet. So I think it's really important to consider at like what time of the school year we are writing this IEP and when the bulk of the IEP will be implemented. And I think it's also important to know when, like what type of IEP is it? Is it an initial IEP? Is it a domain meeting or is it a annual meeting? Or is it just, you know, are we updating something? Um, cause it makes a huge difference too, with the, with the data and the information that we have, unless I'm thinking too much, which happens all the time. No, you're good. I, think you're good. I don't know. I think maybe that's like another logistical thing we should probably touch base before we kind of move forward with the direction. Like it's kind of going back to Diana's point of like, is it in the beginning or is it like right now? Um, because like annual reviews can happen as we know at any point in time. I mean, I, we still have six annual reviews to do before school year ends um it might be more which is crazy because they're going they're going to be going into another grade so how do you how do you write that because you still have to write it as a third grader 
even though you know in six weeks they're not third graders anymore. Uh, do you guys want to do it like the students going into fourth grade or? Yeah, we will do like as if we're writing it right now. Okay. And I and I have the I have the standards pulled up in front of me. Uh, I'm still looking for the reading one. Oh, I'm I have, finding speaking and listening. I have that bookmarked all of the goals. Um, uh, so did you mind sharing that link? Sure. Yes. Copy. And then I have the, I don't know if this I got works. both the man and the, pulled up, the standards pulled up. That first one is English, ELA. And his computer is running so slow. That's not. And this one is math. And this is, this is what I have. Um. Well, thank you for the math one. What was that? I was like, thank you for the math one. I, didn't have, I had the other one, but I just didn't have the math. Um, sorry. My ears. I'm just kidding. So uh, we could make it a writing goal or a reading goal. Uh, let's narrow it down to one of those two. You know, good thing about being a fourth grade student, seems like there's still some um, foundational skills that we can teach. And so if the student has dyslexia, we should probably target one of those reading foundational skills of maybe like on phonics and word, word recognition. Yes, I agree. Dash, I'm so, I feel so old. I have to like, I have to magnify things. Just and I'm seeing a fourth grade level goal would be no apply grade level phonics and word analysis in the coding skills. Use combined knowledge of all letter sounds, correspondence, syllabic patterns, and morphology to read accurately unfamiliar multisyllabic words in context and out of context. I think that right there is a learning goal that we could make. Because even that, if like uh, Josue saying, if he's not where he needs to be, this is a foundational skill. So we can still work towards this goal to try to catch him up. Mm -hmm. Right, so we need to find the corresponding third grade goal. And this is on page 17 for you guys who can't find it. Right. Page 17 of the right back to it. Is that the fourth grade goal, Sergio, or the third grade goal? That's a fourth grade goal, which is great because it's still foundational and if the student has dyslexia. So we need to find the corresponding third grade goal. It, it's right next to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, wait, I'm getting it. So. Um, just a heads up in case, I don't know like how much time we'll have, but just jump, if it does like cut, just jump in and I'll like merge the videos together or something. Just okay. So we'll just click on the same link? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll copy the fourth grade standard. I'll just put it in the chat. Caroline. Too many things open. And so it needs to be a SMART goal. So these are the five things that we're going to need is be specific, right? Uh, what's M? Miserable. Miserable. Miserable? Miserable. Oh, sorry. Freudian slip, maybe. <laughs> I believe it's A. Relevant. Attain, I, I thought, is A attainable? Attainable, yeah. 
relevant and timely and timely so one of the lessons that i did last week or actually no it was yesterday for my last observation was compound words with some of my third graders that even though they couldn't exactly read them all it was getting them to understand the context of one word one word makes two or a second word and that would fulfill i believe multisyllabic yeah and then they have the context of what that is without needing to necessarily like having the context of what it is and then you can work on the goals of the reading part of it later maybe it just throwing it out there as a benchmark like work on compound word skills so so we know. need like a prompt given given uh, 10 so uh, we do have a couple of our students who have goals with multisyllabic words um so for ours they typically sound like when given a series of like 10 multisyllabic words, students will be able to, um, students will, will be able to know and apply grade level phonics to decode, like, let me see if I can, um, why not? Yeah, I'm looking at one of the IEPs that I have in front of me. So I think like what would be a reasonable amount of multisyllabic word when assessing students? I think 10 is good because that keeps them from burning out. Like work because I'm um when we worded like do we want to do like 10 and out of like with like 80 percent accuracy there'll be at least eight correct right? Yeah because at this time the 80 percent accuracy works because you could tell it's eight out of ten right? Okay. So given a series of 10 multisyllabic words, student will. How many, what is multisyllabic? How many syllables? I think that's important too. Um, I mean, and how many benchmarks do we, are we giving? We're doing three benchmarks. So maybe it's, we move one of those benchmarks. We go start with two and then move to three syllables as it goes on mm -hmm. that work. so benchmark one would, could be two syllables benchmark two can be three syllables and what do we have this under do we have we have this under um reading comprehension or or foundational skills foundational skills okay it's on page 17 on that link i sent um Are you at the Susie's house, Josue? How do you know? <laughs> that recognize a yellow one. <laughs> I was like, I don't think that's Josue's house. <laughs> I don't know. Have we ever seen Josue's house? No, <laughs> I've only seen him at Susie. I don't think he has a home. <laughs> I'm looking at page 47, and that's not what. 17. 17. That's not what I see. 17, Caroline. So 17. It, so it's the the third grade one that's under phonics word recognition or fluency. It's under reading standard. Oh. It was K to five. Right. So if you look to the right of that, you'll see grade four students. 
Right, but we need to write it as a grade three student. Oh, we're writing a goal. Right, but the goal needs and to align the, with the And we said it's the end of the year, so we're going to write a goal for fourth grade. Doesn't the goal need to be the grade they're in at the time of writing the goal? And then it gets updated the next when they're in fourth grade. I don't think we can write a fourth grade goal unless they're in fourth grade. We could because if say they were writing the IEP right now, this IEP will not change until May of 2023. So they that's why their goal has to reflect their upcoming school year because their their IEP will not change until the following, um, their following uh, meeting, until their, fan, uh, their following uh, annual review. And then by May, they'll be, they're about to go into fifth grade. So fourth grade goal will be kind of like redundant or maybe too late for that. So it's by annual review 2024 would be the goal statement. Mm, yes, so we can say by the end of the IEP year, which would be May 2024. Phonics. But we're working on the one that's under phonics and word recognition, not fluency, right? Right. Okay. Because I, because fluency, I believe, is more high level. You get fluency after you develop better phonics and word word recognition. Because without the that other part, fluency gets is harder. Because of course, if you don't recognize words instantly and you have trouble reading words, it's going to affect your fluency. So I figured we should take a step back. So by the end of the academic year, given. By the end of the IP year. Given a series of 10 multisyllabic words. The student, student will demonstrate improved uh, like phonics and word analysis skills by decoding unfamiliar multisyllabic words in the context or out of context with 80% accuracy. We're, we're so we're going something like that. Uh, if you look up the doc, the discussion doc we're sharing, you can see what we're typing up at the bottom. Oh, I'm just like looking at this doc and I'm like, where is everything to add? I had to scroll down. Oops. <laughs> oh, Diana's on it. I'm watching her type. <laughs> So if we're doing syllabication patterns, it would be like the student demonstrates proficiency in identifying and applying the patterns, you know, open syllable, closed syllable, whatever, to accurately decode multisyllabic words with 80% accuracy. I'm just focused on this one right now. And I, because, I see. Because the, the goal also then goes into like what are we what are we looking for are we looking for you know progress monitoring contextual application reading accuracy morphologies patterns letter correspondence like all of those things still go into so, so we could utilize that to go into each of the benchmarks, benchmarks. So this is like the overarching, the overarching goal, goal of what we want them to achieve within the year and then we could apply the morphology, let uh, syllable patterns within the benchmarks. Each benchmarks can focus on a different kind of subset of skills for that goal. Perfect, awesome. So I, for our overarching goal, um, I have by the end of the IEP year, May 2024, when given a series of 10 multisyllabic words, the student will know and apply grade level phonics and word analysis skill in decoding with 80% accuracy in three of four trials as measured by biweekly assessments and probes given access to multi-sensory approach to teaching phonics such as tapping out letters and visuals. Okay. What 
I've never seen an IEP or written an IEP that uses probes. What does it mean in this context? Um, it's more like assessments. It's um, It could be like written or uh, verbal assessments too. Like when you randomly just talk to a student to see, ask them to demonstrate their knowledge. So that's like formal and informal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That, that looks good. And so with that goal done, are we moving on to math or is there still another portion for? Well, do you want to go into math or do you want to do the benchmarks for reading first oh. or for like? Probably makes language sense first? to do the benchmarks then. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe it's just because you guys are CPS and I'm not, but I, for word choice, I would rather, I mean, it makes more sense to me to have formal and informal assessments versus probes only because again like I didn't know what that meant well technically all the most of the assessments would be informal because aren't formal assessments just standardized tests no or like the psych evaluations and stuff like that too right they'll be more the formal no but if you give any sort of literacy test to make sure to see if they've re reached a certain point like anything that we had in like Dr. Hammond's book like that would be a formal assessment mm -hmm. it's a any test like any test i don't think it has to be like the no maybe uh, i'm i'm down confused let's look right it up. Well, Google's not going to have the answer. It's such a niche. <laughs> Maybe check, ask a chat GPT. That's exactly <laughs> what know. I'm doing. It's literally <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm putting it into the, the chat. Right, what is the difference between and formal assessment? We have about two minutes. Should we exit and then just hop back on? I'll do that now. Yeah. Right. Before we get cut up in the middle of something. <laughs> 